fellow repurposers, I mothers <laughs> who sew or try to. <laughs> we're all just trying, right? Uh, we're not necessarily professionals, but we try. We try to just clothe our children in living fibers. Um, I just wanted to jump on here today and just encourage you guys. I've been repurposing now for, I think, two years, something like that. Um, I have learned so much and I never stop learning. And ah, it kind of cracks me up when this happens, but every once in a while, I will get totally stumped on something. <laughs> and uh, I was seam ripping this garment today this, uh, it's actually a blend. It's a 50-50 linen cotton blend, but it's got the most beautiful, like, pastel, like, rainbow roses on them, and Naomi's favorite flower is a rose, and she is just enamored with this fabric, and was like, Mom, you have to make me something of that, and I was like, it's a blend. I, I try to do 100% linen when I can, um, but she just loved the print so much. So I was like, okay, what can I make it into? And, uh, anyway, I decided to do an apron. It was a little dress and it was a size six petite women's dress. And I was like, I'm, I love you guys taking dresses, uh, from Goodwill and repurposing them into aprons. Dresses are like the easiest thing, usually, <laughs> to turn into an apron. However, today uh, we ran into some major, major obstacles with a liner, y'all. Liners. Liners kill. Uh, oh, they just kill me. They're so terrible. Uh, but this has been quite a headache. I tried to cut it out around here. And as you can see, I'm going to have to now go back and do kind of like a serger stitcher. But I probably should have just seam ripped it. And I bet it would have come out nice and clean. So. I tried seam ripping, which the seam ripping approach looked like it was going to be easier to try to get um, this awful, awful... See, I was kind of seam ripping along and see, it was even hard to kind of maintain the seam ripping there. Um, yeah, it's just, it is what it is. It was looking great and then I was like, wait a minute. It has this other like lacy part that's attached and I have to now seam rip that out too. As you guys can see, liners, when you get into the, <gasps> the lovely world of trying to remove these crazy liners, it's kind of ridiculous that they go to all this trouble to add all this additional plastic that's gonna be in contact with your skin, right? Instead of just leaving plain old natural fiber. Not only are they synthetic, like acetate, polyester, who else knows what other kind of fabrics they want to use. No, they want the nasty plastic touching your skin. Let's make sure of that. Um, and it's all for the sake of vanity. It's all for the sake of, you know, the garment looking nice and, you know, not showing all of the, the, the inner seams and things. So that when people unzip their dress to put on their beautiful dress, everything just looks beautiful and nice and smooth and there's no bumps of any kind. And just basically put on a trash bag before you put your linen shirt on. Let's just make sure we do that. So anyway, I'm gonna get off my soapbox now. We all know liners are no good. But anyway, usually I just cut them out and it's no big deal. Well today, this one really fought me tooth and nail. All these other hidden layers of like synthetic mesh and then some cotton, maybe cotton or poly batting. I don't know if that's even the word, you guys. I don't even know all the technical terms for sewing and equipment because I am just not a professional seamstress. I am an amateur um, hobbyist, hobbyist so uh, seamstress, <laughs> crafter. Uh, extraordinaire, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> anyway, uh, whatever you want to call me, I'm just a mom who, who tries to shop cheaply at Goodwill and find beautiful natural fiber garments for reasonable prices and that are gently used that I can be repurpose them into clothing for myself or children's clothing uh, for my babies. So I 
was trying to decide how I was gonna go about actually like cutting it down and making an apron and sometimes by the time you get it on your child and you're trying to like size it to them you're like oh gosh this is too big so one of my tricks um, or tips um, I should say with when something is too big I do this tiny little let me see if I can show you. I don't even know what you call it once again, I don't know all the technical names for things, but um, I just do this tiny little crease. Can you see how I folded it over? And I kind of creased it there, and so it a pleat. Maybe that's called a pleat. Um, but I just did a pleat in the front on the top because it was a little too wide and it needed to be a little more narrow uh, between the shoulders. Um, so anyway, just added a little pleat there, and actually, you guys, I do this to children's clothing all the time because when I'm repurposing, sometimes you need an adult neckline to fit a child and it's just too big and baggy. But if you just keep adding little pleats around it or every so often one in the middle and then two on the sides, or you can do them in the back, it actually looks super cute and like you intended to do that. Like you were trying to add some design to the clothing, uh, but really you were just trying to take in a really huge neckline to fit uh, more of a little person. Um, so anyway, that's what I do a ton. I do that with pants that are too big in the hips. I'll add little pleats and it just shrinks in the waistline or shrinks in here, or I'll do little pleats. Um, kind of like on the sleeves to bring the sleeves in. I do these little pleats everywhere. I know that a seamstress would probably be like, that's not how you do it. That's skipping corners or whatever. But honestly, it's a very quick and efficient way of bringing something in, making something larger, smaller. And I do think it looks kind of cute. And what you can do is you can even put, if this kind of bothers you, just that it's open right here or whatever. You can put a little button right here or a little bow and it just looks so precious. So anyway, that hopefully will help some of you when you are repurposing. So I just wanted to give one more quick little tidbit um, that a wonderful seamstress uh, in South Carolina showed me. Um, but she said, whenever you're doing a new seam, so all of, all of these seams were new seams for me as I was um, creating this garment. Um, but what you gotta do is take your iron and she says you always want to you always want to press after you do a new seam because you can see how that's all puckery um, and this seam will get wrinkles in it and it will maybe not lay flat like you want it to it might fold back this way because it doesn't really know what you're wanting it to do um, other than that you just sewed it together um, but she kind of explained it like fabric has pores and when you iron the new seams that you're basically like sealing those pores around the uh, the stitching and you're telling this garment now you lay this way now this is your new way position that you lay in so it kind of helps the garment um just have better form uh and be able to keep those edges um facing the way that you want them. okay y'all here is the please excuse my dirty floors <laughs> um that's real life right um Here's the apron that I finished. Um, so actually, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. As you can see, that little uh, pleat I did in the front to kind of bring it in, make it a little bit more narrow. Um, I ended up just kind of, um, you guys kind of saw a picture of the dress before, but I ended up just kind of cutting the armpit sleeve, kind of, I, well, I separated it and then kind of cut it around and swooped, because this is how my apron actually is. and. I'm gonna put a couple, use the extra fabric that I turned it off the bottom of the dress and use that for two pockets here. And then I'm gonna crisscross uh, the straps in the back and then attach them like right here. On. I really like doing the little crisscrossy straps that are loose in the back, um, but attaching them to the edges of the apron so it can be kind of a slip on apron. That's how my apron is and I have loved that thing so much. It was one of my first ever repurposes I ever did from a, I think it was a blend. It was a linen rayon blend skirt and it's still my apron that I wear to this day. Here is my beloved apron. It's been through uh, many, 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 many meals and baking sessions with me. Um, I love it so much and this is kind of what the back looks like. Crisscrossed. 
uh, in the back here, and I sewed it together in the middle so that it is literally a slip-on apron. So it can be super quick to just get on and then get back to cooking. As you can tell, it has a little hole. Yeah. I gotta figure out a way to repair that so it doesn't look like just a big patch on the old belly. <laughs> okay, kiss the little baby through the hole. <laughs> I don't think I ever wore an apron until I started um, wearing linen because my linen is so precious to me that I feel like every time I'm cooking near the stove or I'm using oil or whatever, I'm like, oh, I don't want it to splatter. I don't want it to get on my linen. I know linen's pretty stain resistant, but oil in any clothes is like a no bueno. Um, so if I do get oil splatter on my linen, I immediately wash it with soap and water. Like I hand wash it in the sink. I take it off and just immediately spot, spot treat it um, in the sink with soap and water and warm water. And that usually gets the oil right out. I, a lot of times in mid cooking and then I'm like, ah, my apron, this is getting splattery. I need my apron right now. And so I just want to like go and just like slip it on and then just not even miss a beat. So anyway. That's my spiel on aprons. <laughs> but I have loved the apron life and even so much so, I love the giant pockets in the front and it's just nice having an apron on. Like when you have children coming up and hugging you and grabbing on your clothing and whatever, like you'll get stains from top to bottom. And I'm like, there's a reason like Ma Ingalls wore an apron. There's a reason women used to wear aprons all the time. Like not to mention you can like pull it up and use it as a basket to like carry stuff. Or you can have these big deep pockets. You know, these cell phones nowadays are gigantic. They just radiate you and um, I feel like the linen is shielding for the radiation anyway. So if you slip it into a linen pocket, that would be a good thing. Then it's not right on your skin and the linen is kind of buffering the radiation. Um, and it's better than just holding it in your hand. Yeah, I love aprons, guys, and pockets. Amazing. So anyway, I just wanted to get on here, encourage y'all, um, keep sewing, even if you run into obstacles. It is a journey. It's just like art of any kind, right? You'll be working on a project. Hey, maybe not even art, maybe even a plumbing project, maybe a home improvement project. It never goes as planned, right? Like you think, oh, this project's gonna take me 10 minutes and it should be this, this, and this, and I have these parts and this should all work out, right? And then something goes awry and you're like, ah, oh, I gotta go to Home Depot. And then you come back and, oh, I got the wrong size. I gotta go to Home Depot again. It's the same type of thing, but with sewing or crafting. Sometimes when you're weaving wisteria, it likes to hug you. <laughs> and it likes to get tangled like hair. It's uh, kind of crazy. And you have to try to tame the branches. And hope that it doesn't whip you. <laughs> We're getting there. I will say this. Wisteria Vine is a fierce little guy to try to weave together. He's very spindly and very tangly. And it's quite exhausting. One of the most exhausting baskets I've ever made. Like, you run into obstacles, but you have to just improvise and just go with it. And just know that even people like myself who have been sewing and repurposing linen into children's clothing for a couple years now, still don't know everything and still, you know, make mistakes and still run into things that are super challenging. Um, but let that not discourage you from trying, you gotta just try. And honestly, I have learned so much through trial and error with sewing. Um, but if you're too afraid to take those first steps to actually get, get your sewing machine out and just start sewing the linen. So many people tell me all the time that they are so afraid to just start sewing the linen because they found a nice linen shirt and they like don't wanna mess it up and they're afraid to sew it. But I will tell you this, that you will learn so much, even if you botch it, you can always seam rip stuff. You can always, you know, modify things. Oh my gosh, I had a friend. She is so sweet. And she was learning to repurpose uh, linen garments. 
and she started sewing something and I think she was trying to make um, a bra for herself. She was trying to make some linen underwear with mad props to her because I still haven't figured that one out. That's like super challenging or like at least it is in my mind and I need to just sit down and overcome this obstacle of the linen garments, uh, the linen undergarments. I don't know why that seems so hard to me but anyway so she was trying to make a linen bra or something like that and something happened with it and anyway she, she's like it looks like a baby bib and we were laughing so hard her and I because I'm like that's exactly it I was trying to make a linen head wrap of sorts and it looked like baby pants <laughs> on my head it looked ridiculous it did not look like a nice head wrap but because I needed a head wrap I still wear it to this day they still kind of look like I have baby pants tied on my head <laughs> Anyway, what I'm trying to say is don't get discouraged if you botch it. You can always turn it into something else. Maybe it could become baby pants. Maybe it could become a baby bib. Maybe it can become a cute little bandana for your dog's neck. I have no idea, but you're going to find some way to repurpose that garment. You're going to find some use for it. Even turn it into reusable linen toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, shalom y'all. Hope you hope this makes you laugh and encourages you to just get out there, get your sewing machine out, and just start sewing. Even if you don't know what you're doing, have fun with it. Don't put pressure on yourself and don't get discouraged. Just know that there are many other moms out there who are right along with you, including myself. <laughs>